our individual lives. Lord, we ask that you give us attentive ears. We ask, oh God, that you give us wisdom. We ask that you help us, oh God, as we open our hearts to receive of you, even at this time. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much um, to the pastor and also to the um, co-leaders of the church for bringing up this subject of health even at this um, prayer conference. Today in the health uh, segment we're discussing on feeding and exercise as it relates to health and um, tomorrow by God's grace we'll be looking at the third aspect which is going to be on um, hygiene generally. Amen? Amen? Amen. Uh, some of us don't sound excited to talk about health. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Uh, and we read in the Bible in the book of um, Exodus Exodus uh, 23 I'm going to read verse 25 Exodus 23 verse 25 and it says you shall serve the Lord your God and you shall bless thy bread and thy water and I will take away sickness from the midst of thee some people are not in church today Amen, Amen. in uh, chapter 15 verse number 26 Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 and said if thou would diligently according to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, we are talking on the subject of health, and uh, every one of us, I want to believe, know the pop uh, popular passage in. Third John verse 2, what does it say? Love, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God bless you. So God is very much interested uh, in the subject of our health. I have before me about uh, roughly 45 minutes and I'm going to try to use it, uh, use it judiciously. Amen? So we're talking about health to every one of us. And like I mentioned earlier on, the aspects that are very pertinent to good health relates to number one, our feeding. They say the way to a man's heart is through his belly. So our feeding is very important. Our exercise is very important. Our rest is very important. Also our environment is very important. And today we're going to be talking about the first three aspects. Uh, the things that we eat are very important. Many of us eat. There is nobody here that will say, I don't like food. No matter how proud you are, or no matter how humble you are, or no matter how spiritual you are, you must eat. If you don't eat, you're not going to be here today. And much more important than the fact that we eat is what we eat. The type of foods we put into our system uh, matters a lot. It's very important. Why is it important? Because this is what is going to distinguish between a sick person and a healthy person is going to distinguish between one that carries diseases and one that is free of diseases. And there is a very important need for every one of us, even at this point, to reevaluate, you know, the type of things that we eat with regards um, to nutrition. It all boils down to bal uh, balance. It all boils down to balance. When we talk about balance, you want to balance the food you eat, your diet. You want to balance diet. And uh, I don't need to start explaining what balanced diet is to us. Neither do I need to start explaining what health is to us. Uh, but there must be balance, okay, in our foods. There are how many classes of food? Huh? I'm, talk I'm, I'm not a teacher. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to, to colleagues, okay? Uh, so. There are six classes of food, isn't it? Anybody can name them? Carbohydrates, proteins, fat and oil, vitamins, minerals, and the last one, water. Water. Okay. So, yeah? Fibers, yes. It's not seven. 
God bless you. Okay, so he has added one more to you. So seven classes of food. Amen. And these are all very important. We have to pay, you know, pertinent attention to all of these um, classes of food. I come from an African community, and I discover that in African diet, uh, we love carbohydrates. We love our carbohydrates so much. Uh, an African man can eat his entire diet can just be full of carbohydrates. Maybe add one piece of meat to it just to, you know, to cheer yourself on, you know. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's why we can eat, you know, a whole big bowl of rice, and then maybe if you are rich, you add plantain to it, and then uh, chicken, a piece of chicken, and then oh. I'm having a good meal. Even if you go to the fast foods, the same thing is also applicable. You hardly see fruits and vegetables, you know, when you even uh, go to those um, so-called restaurants back home uh, or fast food joints, and they hardly come in the package. And that's why I love this, you know, community, Dominica. If I go to a restaurant and I tell them I want rice, I want, you know, I want the, the, the spaghetti, you know, chow mein, I want that. After they serve me all of that, and then they come and add the, the salad to it. I'm, like, I'm not a good, you know. But it's very important because you understand the importance of the fruits and the vegetables in that diet that you're going to have. They don't want me to have constipation. And I appreciate them for that. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. But it is very important that uh, we pay very you know, close attention to this. And we're going to talk, number one, on our nutrition. The man adam adam uh this man was living in the garden of eden i don't think there was kfc at the time i don't think there was burger king at the time or even mcdonald's at the time but this man i want to believe they were, uh, he was a vegetarian in his own capacity because uh, we never heard of any of those animals in the garden of eden dying so i want to believe he was a garden, he was a vegetarian okay uh, you can argue with your phone screen <laughs> amen so, and also, they had a lot of fruits in the Garden of Eden. To the extent that God said, you know what, you can have any of these fruits in the Garden, just that one, don't touch it. And this man was still greedy. You know, he still went after that one. So he loved these fruits, he loved these vegetables so much. He can, <clears throat> God bless you. And um, he, we discovered that with the type of diet that these people had at that time, you know, they lived long. They lived long. Now we have the KFC, we have all those nice, nice, you know, fast so-called foods um, that we have access to. And we see that people are even living, you know, less. When we were going to medical school, there were certain diseases that they said, oh, these are for old people. But guess what? We are seeing it in young people. And we are, oh, now so I'm, like, I have had to review you know, my medical books and keep updating myself almost every day because things are changing at a very rapid rate. We hear of cancers, and cancer used to be things that we were not even hearing about before, and then all of a sudden it became a thing that we hear about in old people, 70s, 80s, and we're hearing about, you know, digestive system cancers, and we're hearing about lung cancers, and ovarian cancers, and reproductive system cancers. But now we are seeing those so-called cancers in young people, 30 and less, and 20s and 15s. And so this you know, points to the fact that there is something in the diet that you know, either is missing or we are taking excess of, or some things are not being done in moderation, or some things are being added that were not there before. And why you know, is this happening? It's because we are not paying our close attention to our diet so our diet um somebody said can you dare to skip bread in your in your breakfast now to a student or to to a regular person bread is very important uh i can in fact for me personally bread was one of the you know you can call it my best food you know for many many years but now uh, at the beginning of the week, I, I purchased bread, right? I purchased bread, and this thing can stay in my week for two weeks now. Now, that was not possible some years ago. Uh, I love bread so much, I can eat bread three times a day for one week, just add different you know, uh, condiments to it, different you know, side dishes to it, and I'm good to go. I can have bread with juice in the morning, have it with sardine in the night, you know, have it with this and that, and I'm good to go add it with bread the following morning, I mean with eggs the following morning, add it with beans the other day, and. I'm good to go, just make sure that the bread is there. But this bread that we're talking about um, has a lot of 
you know, detriment to us. Number one is the, the flour. These are processed foods and it has more of carbohydrates. It's, it's not good for us. Can we switch, you know, some of these carbohydrates? I'm not talking particularly to bread, but I'm using it as a, um, as a point of contact to all the carbohydrates that we take, the rice, the yam, the dashing, dashing the potatoes, all of that. Can we um, cut down a little bit on the carbohydrates and give more room to fruits, vegetables, proteins, you know, the vitamins, the, the, the minerals, and all those other classes of food. Can we add them to our diet? We saw those people, um, the Japanese and, this, and the Koreans, these people from Asia, they look so small and petty, but these people actually live long. Their lifespan is so, so long. These people live into their 80s and their 90s and their 100s and their 120s. Why? Because of the type of diets that they have. The, the Japanese in their, in, in their foods, the rice, rice is common to almost every country. Every country in the world eats rice. But we see that in some of these countries, they have rice, instead of being the main dish, like we do in the Western and in the African community, uh, they have it as a side dish. So the same way you have your meats inside your food or your vegetables inside your food, that is the way they have rice inside their food. So you may just have maybe three spoons of rice, and then you have more fruits and more vegetables in the plate. And we see that these people, you see a Japanese, they're looking so fresh, like today's bread. Like these people are really, really looking, looking good. You see the Asians uh, also, the same thing also, you know, is peculiar to them. So we, should, we can cultivate this habit. We go to the scriptures, and those people were so excited. Oh, we are in the palace right now. You know, there's so much food to eat. They say you should eat like a king in the morning, eat like a prince in the afternoon, and eat like a pauper at night. And so they were so excited that they were in the palace where they can get to, you know, afford all of those delicacies that they wanted to eat. And why some people were, you know, ordering, uh, Madam, I want, you know, the biggest bowl of Gary, and I want the biggest bowl of pounded yam, and I want the biggest bowl of, you know, McDonald's. Can I get a burger? Oh my God, I've been missing burger and fries. You know, and Daniel proposed in his heart that he was not going to defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, you know, with the wine which he drank. And what happened? He asked the princes of the eunuch to do what? Give me beans. I'll choose proteins over, you know, all of those nice, nice, delicious uh, fast foods, junks, and let's see what happens. And then they, it became a competition. And over the course of a few weeks, and then they brought all of them out again, and they were watching them. We discovered the Bible makes record that Daniel and his team, they were more preferable. They looked much better. These people had no pimples on their faces. These people had no 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 cro cro no you know no no wrinkles that we could that we could find you know on their skin. Why? Because of the type of diet. That points to the fact that proteins are very 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 nutritious, you know, and they are very important in our diet. Amen. 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 Someone said that we should eat at a ratio of seventy five percent fruits and vegetables and 25% of other foods. Now this sounds like a lot. And I'm going to make reference um, to this. Just a few, about a week or two ago, we were having this conversation at the hospital in my department. And we're talking about how people in this community develop diseases so quickly. And we're pointing it down to the diet. And I was saying that it's because of the fast foods. We depend more on junks in this environment than on healthy foods. And one of the doctors, a Dominican, was trying to argue that it's because that's what they can afford. I was very quick to counter that point because let's take an experiment. A bucket of KFC chicken goes for how much? Anybody knows? Huh? $65, okay, so we have some, some, some KFC finance fans here. <laughs> okay, $65, right? Now, $65, and I get one meal out of it, right? More than one meal. 
Okay, maybe two, right? Okay, sixty-five dollars. If I take it to market on a Saturday morning, I buy rice, a whole big um, this thing of rice. Maybe it goes for about ten dollars. No, a big uh, this thing. Yeah, family size goes for about ten dollars. I buy peppers. Maybe things are expensive now. Maybe I can buy tomatoes. Maybe what? Another seven dollars, right? I buy um, vegetables. Spinach is three dollars in the market. I know because I go there on Saturdays. Okay, you buy your meat in the market in the at, uh, at any of the supermarkets or even at the market. Meats probably what ten dollars max. Eight dollars you can get for eight dollars four pounds of drumstick and all of that. What else do you need? Salt and all those other things. Maybe another twenty dollars. Now with these sixty-five dollars, you can cook a meal that can last an entire day. Am I right or wrong? Yes, you can cook a meal that lasts an entire day. I'm talking about breakfast. I'm talking about lunch, and I'm talking about dinner. With sixty-five dollars. Now somebody has spent that sixty-five dollars on KFC, and within a few hours, maybe you make one bowel movement, and then that's it. You're looking for the next one. The amount of money that we spend on the junks, when you compare it to the amount of money you're going to spend on healthy diet, at the end of the day, you discover that it's, you're spending much more on the junks than on the healthy diet, especially in this community. We live in a community where famine is appreciated. In America, it may be a different story. In America, you can buy your um, chips and fries, maybe $3. And they always are so eager to, and very generous enough to add the you know, carbonated drinks to it. They, they give you a can you know, of carbonated drinks, and you're good to go for $3. And to eat healthy in those communities, you probably have to be richer. Now, I come from a community where people believe that when you're big in stature, it means that you are living healthy. It's a lie from the pit of hell. And so when somebody sees you travel uh, from a remote area in Nigeria and you travel abroad, they are watching you and they are watching your pictures on Facebook. Ah, you've not had weight. Ah, what are you eating in that place? Ah, which part of the country do you live in that, you know, that makes you? Ah. And I've seen quite a number of my friends that travel you know, here to Dominica. And within one year, these people actually like balloon, they blow up. And you're wondering, what's going on with this person? It's boils down to our diet. I've spoken a lot about diet. There are things that we can appreciate, that we can swap in our breakfast. Oh, sorry. There are things that we can swap in our breakfast. Amen. There are things that we can swap our breakfast with. We have oat meals and our fruits and our vegetables. We can swap our breakfast with oatmeal. And you can have, rather than say you want to have oats now for breakfast, rather than adding, somebody will add milk, somebody will add sugar, somebody will add honey, somebody will add you know, all kind of uh, other sweetness to it. We can have, instead of those processed foods, we can add you know, uh, the natural sweetness to it. Add a little bit of banana to it, add a little bit of uh, strawberries to it, add a little bit of, um, uh, what else? Eh? Racings, God bless you. Add a little bit of dates to it, add a little bit of uh, grapes, God bless you. You see, we have some LD eaters here. Eh? Eh? <laughs> God bless you. You see, so there are, there, are, there are alternatives, healthier alternatives that we can add to our foods and will give us you know, more healthy results than the ones that we already have going. And when you do that, you discover that you're actually having a more you know, balanced diet. We have uh, other options for breakfast. You can have say you want to eat even the bread that we're talking about. Instead of eating bread every day, because we know that if you're eating 
you know, if you want to cut down on carbohydrates, we're not saying that you should stop carbohydrates because if you try to do that, number one, you're going to have low energy. And for students especially, you may not be able to function, you know, at work because it's like you've not had breakfast. Breakfast is an important meal of the day. But how many of us actually have breakfast before going to work? Uh, how many of us are able to eat in the morning before going to class? Some of us probably wake up so late and then from bedroom to bathroom to closet to the door, we won't forget to do quiet time in the morning. But our breakfast is very important. Why? Because it keeps, I mean, this is where the metabolism starts from. It's already begin, you already begin, you know, your body is already getting in tune. The different organs are already working and you know, you are able to create your, your mental state, you know, is optimal for you to be able to go about your business for the day. What other options are there? Berry yogurt smoothie. <laughs> These things sound very, somebody you say expensive, but really they are, not, they, are not, they are not so expensive. Sometimes when I'm doing my exercise in the morning and I, there's one place close to All Saints, and these people are, are there as early as 6.30, 7 o'clock, they're selling bananas. The banana there goes for about two dollars, three dollars. And I buy one bunch of banana in the morning, and I get to my house together with my oats, and I dice some banana into into the oats. You know, by the time I have that breakfast, the day is already set for me because I know that by the time I'm getting to work, I just uh, next patient, next patient, next patient, and I'm good to go. Why? Because I've already taken care of this business before you know heading out of my house. So we have berry yogurt smoothies that we can try, mix them with some raspberries, some blueberries, almond, and all of those. And you know, they provide healthy diets. Alright? I'm going to I'm I'm going to be a little bit practical with us. I'm going to be a little bit practical with us. For some of us that are um, students, some of the options may not be so available, but even with the options that we have available, there are things that we can do to be able to achieve even healthier results. There are things that we can do to be able to achieve healthier results. If you decide to buy, you know, to go with all those, you know, expensive expensive options you want to eat the celery you want to eat the you know strawberries and every day every day you're doing that you, you're going to go broke very quickly too but a little fruit in your diet okay a little vegetable in your diet a little a little you know more proteins in your diet peas are very cheap black eye beans red eye beans lentils are very cheap and even much more healthy, it has more health benefits even than the beans, okay? All of these are more affordable options which are even also very healthy. But some of us don't want to do that. We'd rather go to Bayfront and go for the pizza. A box of pizza goes for how much? God is good. $50. <laughs> Fifty dollars. And somebody said that if you if you can eat one pizza a day for about maybe about for a few years, you are not far from heart diseases, atherosclerosis, and all of that. Why? Because of the high cholesterol and all those fats that are contained in all those foods. We should choose more healthy options. We should choose more healthy options in our diets. We should choose more healthy options in our diets. You want to eat KFC? KFC is good. Let me tell you something. I love KFC. I eat it maybe, maybe once a month or once in three. Why? Because I know that no matter how much I love KFC, I mean, it's good for the parties, you're doing a bad day, or you're just so lazy on this Sunday afternoon. Or this Saturday and you've done so much exercise and you've done so much reading and you just ah, before I go to the kitchen again and put that beans on the fire and another two three hours oh my god like 
Can I just order KFC? Let's finish with this, at least for tonight. You know, once in a while, it's okay to spoil yourself. There are cheat days even for those that are so fanatic. There are cheat days, but it should not be a, you know, a habit or an everyday thing. And there are some people here that I know that hardly a week goes that we've not visited KFC. If we are regular customers, as soon as we open the door, they already know your name. Ah, hello, welcome back. You know? Huh? There are some of us that under our, under our mattresses at home, under our mattresses at home, there are boxes of pizza. Huh? By the time you open somebody's cabinet in the kitchen, you're seeing boxes of pizza and boxes of cornflakes and all those things there, yeah? God will help us in Jesus' name. <laughs> so we should, we should pay more attention to our diet. We should pay more attention to our diet. It's very, very important. It's very important. Fruits are very important for us. Papaya, mangoes, bananas, avocado, oranges, grapefruits, watermelon, passion fruits, lemon, all of these apples, you can never go wrong with apples. An apple a day, I don't know how true it is, but I eat apple. <laughs> Apples are very good. They are very good to us. If you have, no matter the health condition that you have, there is none of them that contraindicates eating an apple. Whether you have digestive problem, or you have heart problem, or you have colon problem, whatever it is, there is none of them that contraindicates eating an apple. At least one a day is very good for you. Amen? Amen. So eating apples, eating pineapples, these are very good. Purple are very good, you know, for the digestive system. They help, they contain papain, and papain is this enzyme that helps with digestion. So people that have problem with constipation, irritable bowel disease, even um, those that are lactose intolerant, purple is very good at correcting a lot, you know, of those digestive system problems. Okay, vegetables, bay leaf juice, tomato juice, cabbage, um carrots these are very good for us these are very good for us and they are not expensive i can argue with you on that they are not they are not expensive but if you are like that consultant of mine when we we're having this conversation a few weeks ago and he told me dr philip how, how long have you been in dominica i told him i've been in dominica uh 12 years plus and he said wow and in this time, you still think that food is not expensive in Dominica? I said, Doctor, food is not expensive in Dominica. And I said, where do you shop, Doctor? And then he told me, he goes to S Smart. I said, those people are very smart. They know how to bring out money from your pocket. I asked him, Doctor, how much do you spend on food in a month? He told me 5,000, about close to 5,000 on food in a month. I said, are you cooking for the community? 5,000 on food in a month. What are you buying? <laughs> what are you buying? 5,000 of food in the world, but he's trying to live healthy. Now that is for him. I don't know what is contained in his diet, but I know I cannot afford 5,000 of food in a month. And I know where I do my shopping, local market. 6 a.m. on Saturday morning, you see me there by God's grace. I do my shopping from the farmers directly and at the local market. Where I'm going to get number one, fresh produce, number two, affordable produce, number three, healthy produce. Oh my God. And God has been good to me. Now you may be looking at my belly and say I have a little bit of, you know, <laughs> a little bit of family pack. It's coming down by the grace of God. Amen? Yeah. Yes, God is doing great things. Amen? Yeah. There are some of us, we have what we call love pockets on the side. Like the belly has even stopped growing. Now it's growing on the side and it's growing to the back too. We, we have to pay attention. We have to pay attention to our diet. We have to switch you know, some of those things that we eat. You know, sorrel juice, ginger. Now, we know the benefits of ginger. What are the benefits of ginger? You have a flu. Ginger, and this place, they, they really appreciate ginger a lot. It's not just for our, when we're making our juices. But it's very, 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 very healthy. And you can cook almost any soup and add ginger to it. You prepare your meat, you can add ginger to it. You prepare your tea, you can put ginger. 
like ginger is very very useful it's very very healthy cinnamon is very very healthy it's very very useful so some of these things we can you know inculcate into our into our foods almonds okay and the grains also the rice are very very important the our our, our carbohydrates potatoes irish and sweet switch the french fries and the fried the fried produces switch them to the to the boiled produces or the baked ones fried foods they contain more fat and more fat puts you at risk of more health diseases or more health or more illnesses so switch the fried foods for the boiled foods switch them for the baked foods your chicken you don't necessarily have to fry your chicken you can bake your chicken and it even tastes better I know because I, I love baked chicken. Okay, red meat, not so healthy, especially for, for those that are, you know, middle age and above. I'm talking 35 years and above. Red meat, this is meat from uh, your beef, your um, goat meat, and so on. The red meat, they put you at more risk, you know, for health diseases. Your, colon problems and other digestive system problems okay and so we, we can switch you know some of those foods even the chicken that we're talking about now i prefer chicken not because it is you know uh 100 healthy but less poison and i love my meat all right but we can reduce quantity some of us can eat chicken if they serve some of us food now and it doesn't have chicken in it, we'll frown our face. We'll frown our face. Why? Because we are so used to some of these foods. All right? So we can pay more attention, you know, to some of these foods that we, that we, that we eat. And somebody said there are no foods in Dominica. Who told you so? There are no foods in Dominica. Maybe not the ones you are so used to. You talk about swallow foods for some of us that are Nigerians. And I came across a few uh, very recently. Our, they have what you call, what is it called, farine here in Dominica, yes? Farine in Dominica. They have cornmeal in Dominica. They have cream of wheat in Dominica. Even the oats, the oats that, 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 we, that, we, that we drink, we can also make them the same way you prepare your pando yam and all of that. Plantain. You can blend it and stir it and stir it and make the same way you make your uh, your pando yam, and it comes out very nice. It forms very well too, and it's very filling also to the belly. You cannot eat that food and carry physiology. You're gonna slip off very quickly too. Okay, so for the students, there are many options available. I will talk about the vegetables uh, that are there too. The spinach is there, the kale, the celery, the lettuce, you know, you name it. They have them available around us. So we should, you know, start exploring these healthier options uh, of food so that we can, you know, benefit maximally and we can see improvements in our health. We can see improvements in our health. Personal testimony. A few um, months ago, I was on vacation. And while I was on vacation from work, I just shut down. I was not interested in doing any exercise or even paying attention to the things that go into my mouth. And within the space of one month, <laughs> I added 15 kilograms. I added 15 kg within the space of one month. Now, I knew I added weight. Why? Because my belt, I had to be changing the hole on the belt uh, for the buckle. And also, I discovered that some of my pants were getting smaller, uh, smaller years. And I also discovered that some of my shirts were getting smaller. And I also discovered that I was becoming slower in some of my activities, my physical activities. And also in processing, you know, things in writing, I became slower. You know, in processing, thought processing, I became slower. And I remember that a few years ago, while I was in America, 
I, after adding such uh, weight, amount of weight so drastically as well, that I started having problems with digestion. But I thought I was lactose intolerant at the time. But I discovered that it was just because I added so much weight so rapidly that I started becoming bloated. What am I trying to say? Is that not only is our diet important, but also our physical activity is very, very important. The easiest way to add weight, if you're looking to gain weight, is number one, you eat plenty, maybe not necessarily healthy. Number two, you sleep well. Number three, you stay out of trouble. That's the easiest way to gain weight. Those few years ago in America, I, because it was the winter season, so I was not very keen on you know, hopping on the bus and just going anywhere. I wanted to stay home so that away from the cold. So I was eating a lot. I was doing less exercise. And of course, I was sleeping a lot. Within a few weeks, I just saw that I was getting bigger and fatter. And each picture I posted for, ah, Philip, calm down, Philip, calm down, Philip, calm down. Why? Because of those three factors. If you're going to maintain a healthy lifestyle, also, you eat well, you sleep well, and also you stay out of trouble. You eat well by eating balanced diets. You sleep well by sleeping moderately. How many hours is a person supposed to sleep in a day? That's what they say. That's what they say. You, you should sleep a minimum of eight hours in a day. Now for those of us that are in the working class, that might not be possible to sleep a whole eight hours in a day. But you will soon discover that if you are starving yourself of sleep, very quickly you're going to start seeing the side effects. And then to soothe those side effects, you start looking for alternative options. And that is where this bad, bad, bad habit of caffeine comes in. People depending on caffeine to stay alert. You cannot cheat nature. It's not possible. You cannot cheat sleep. Cheat will come back and knock you on the head. If you're not sleeping sufficiently, your body is going to complain. Your body is going to complain. And then you decide to switch you know coffee and there are some people that 7 a.m or 8 o'clock in the morning as soon as they're getting to work they're going to the coffee machine why because they've not done properly you know with regards to sleep i would not tell you the number of hours that you must sleep in a day depending on how your program goes or depending on how uh, busy your schedule is but one thing I would always advise is that at every opportunity you get for rest, please rest. For some of us, we are studying, maybe preparing for exams or for work purposes, for the, uh, those that are teachers and professors, or even with the children. And so you're coming back from work, maybe 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and you're so tired, but you still have to do you know, this and that activities. And by the time you're getting home, you still want to study. There is no way you will carry your book when you're very tired and it's going to enter. The amount of time that you will spend to read a chapter of a book when you are well rested is nothing compared to the amount of hours you're going to spend studying a chapter when you're tired is a proven fact. If you're well rested, your efficiency goes back to as close as possible to 100%. And so 
by the time you carry that book, maybe in one hour, you are able to assimilate a lot. But if you're tired, like I was having a conversation with somebody this morning, and the person told me that they carried you know, their book last night when they got home from, from the program, and they wanted to start solving questions. Now, that did not go so well. Why? Because the body is tired. And then the person told me that this morning, very early before coming to church, they picked up the same question set again, another set of questions, and then out of six questions, they got five correct. Why? Because the body is well rested. When you rest yourself properly, you're able to achieve more. You're able to cover a lot more within an atom of time. So it's very important that we pay attention to rest. That we pay attention to rest. If you are a person that is as busy as some of us, in the afternoon when you come back from work, power nap. Oh, power nap. Very important. 30 minutes of sleep, and it will do you a lot of good for the rest of the day. 30 minutes of sleep in the afternoon can do you a lot of good for the rest of the day. It will save you a lot of hours you know, into the night, struggling to cover you know, uh, your materials that you want to cover for those of us that are students. It gives you more energy. There are some of us, after school, and that will come on Wednesday for Bible study, the ushers are trying. We just come to church, and that's where we sleep. Why? Because you are very tired. You cannot cheat nature. It's not possible. You're going to sleep a lot. I'm guilty of that. Ushers, God bless you. Thank you very much for helping me. <laughs> we are guilty of that. Why? Because we are not well rested. But I discovered that when I'm able to get minutes of sleep, and then I go to church, I feel less tired and more alert during the message and during the, you know, during, during the activities in church. Why? Because I have done you know, my part. So we should pay good attention to rest. And then at night, we take enough time to rest. Personally, I discover that if I stay up at night, whatever makes me stay up, up until 5, 6 AM, if I don't rest at that time, one hour of sleep at that time, if I don't take that little time to rest at that time before I go about my activities, by the time it's getting to 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, I start moving like a robot. Why? Because my body is like I'm reorganizing and rearranging my body system, forcing it to do what it's not used to doing. God created the night time for a purpose. I must walk the walk of you that sends me while it is what? Day. The night comes what? When no man can work. When we should be resting. So we should use our night time properly. Amen? The last one is exercise. Exercise, the role that exercise plays in our body can never be overemphasized. Exercise is very, very important. And some of us can say, but where is the time? Where is the time for exercise? I have to do this, and I have to do that, and I have to go to this place, and I have to go to that place, and I have to go to... Exercise is very, very important. Walking, an exercise as simple as walking. In fact, scientists and doctors, they say that walking actually exercises every muscle in your body. It's one of the greatest exercises that you can do. It's not targeted at one specific organ, like you don't have to go to the gym and carry all those big, big you know, things that can injure you. Walking, 30 minutes of walk in a day can do a whole ton of good to the body system. And it doesn't cost you a lot. You don't need to pay the $100 or the $150 for gym registration to take a walk. And you can do it in your house. You can do it in your neighborhood, on the streets, just around the block. Take a Jericho match around your block and pray as you are doing it. So God will bless you as you're doing that. 
that time for your quiet time or your prayer time, you can turn it into exercise. Kill two birds with one stone. Go for a visitation. Go and visit your friend. They will know that you're doing it, using the opportunity to do exercise. I just came to greet you. Ah, it's been a while. Exercise. All right? So exercise is very, very important. You can also go jogging. And I discover in Dominica, every time I'm doing exercise and going for exercise in the morning, for work in the morning, anything from 6 o'clock, you see the people that are working. But from 4 o'clock to 5.36, those are the time for the runners in Dominica here. And we can do better. We can do better. We can do better. God will help us in Jesus' name. I say God will help us in Jesus' name. We can go swimming. This Dominica is such a blessed country. We have, you don't have to pay for swimming pool. See the ocean. Big one. The biggest swimming pool. Uh, the biggest, look at it. And we have the beaches all around us. So you can go swimming. Huh? You can go swimming. Amen. Amen. We can go swimming. We can go jogging, um, table tennis, uh, you know, badminton, football for the guys, netball for the girls, basketball. There are a lot of facilities here for sports in Dominica. Cycling. They have, there are lots of activities that are also very affordable here in Dominica that we can you know, take advantage of to improve ourselves. We have majority of us here that are medical students and uh, studying at the university, uh, nursing uh, professionals as well. And I look in the student lounge. Every time I go to the school, I always pop my eyes in, you know, in the student lounge. And I see the, you know, the treadmill is there, and then the, uh, the cycling machine, machine is there. And I can count the number of times I've met people in that, in that lounge doing exercise. I can count the number of times I met people using those those equipments that they have there. In the past, maybe four or five years, that those machines have been there. And we are young people. There is nobody here that is more than 80 years old. I'm not the person. We are all young people. We are all young people, and we can do better with regards to our health. We can do better with regards to our diet. We can do better with regards to our eating. We can do better with regards to our exercising. We can do better with regards to our sleeping habits. We can do better. We can do better. And I pray God will help us. He will give us grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. As God is blessing us spiritually, he also wants to bless us physically. He wants to bless us, you know, mentally and emotionally. But we also have a role to play if we are going to be beneficiaries of the good things that God is doing, even at this time. God has made so much provision available for every one of us. It is now up to us to take advantage of those resources that are made available to us and i pray god to give us grace in jesus name we're just going to rise to our feet i promise not to spend uh, go beyond the time limit there is a lot to talk about and we can spend the whole day talking on this subject of health and healthy living with regards to our the things that we do our activity levels and also our diet and there are lots of materials to cover here I have more than 10, you know, documents, pieces of documents here. Well, I cannot go through all of them within this atom of time given to us. But let's talk to God in prayer this time that God will help us. Every one of us in this room is guilty in one way or the other of some of these things that we've talked about. There are places that are lacking. But let's ask God to give us the grace, to give us the wisdom that we need to go about 
those things that we've talked about and even much more that we know of so that we can be able to achieve better results with regards to our health. God does not wish for us to be sick. God does not wish for us to be ill. God does not wish for us to be suffering from sicknesses. The desire of God is for us to be in health and to prosper. And we can prosper in our health too. We can prosper in our diets too. God give me grace. God give me wisdom. God give me the courage. God give me the strength. God help me to take a step on these things that I've had.